All right, how we doing? We got a lot of seats behind me. Should I sit on one of them or should I stand? Okay, it's just, I've never done a keynote with seats behind me, that was good. Anyways, we got a, a, a lively crowd in here, I can tell today. And uh, my name's J.D. Salbago, as she said. I'm the CEO of Legion Ventures. Uh, I've been a global leader in uh, blockchain digital securities in this uh, industry for quite a long time. Uh, spent a lot of years through the ICO world, providing ICO uh, investment banking services. And I ran a couple Asian companies as well, helping them expand into the US markets and European markets. And then during the wave of crypto capital markets and ICOs, I brought a lot of major US VC funds and, and companies from, uh, as I said, the US and Europe into Asia to expand. I've kind of been, as what they call me, my nickname in Japan, the Gaijin Samurai. For all you don't know what Gaijin is, that's the white monster they call foreigners in, in Japan. So that, that is kind of me. Today I want to talk about the future of payments and uh, borderless P2P commerce. We're, we're at a new stage right now and a new paradigm shift within, uh, I think, almost every industry right now um, that we're seeing a lot of problems happening. You know, uh, here's a little bit of background on myself. I, I gave you a little bit more background, but I still I provide STO advisory services. Um, companies wanting to expand into Asia, specifically Japan, Seoul, Korea, and Singapore. As we know, Thailand is still a small, uh, small ecosystem for blockchain, but I'm starting to feel like right now we're having some buzz here growing. I'm starting to see the innovation through the regulation, uh, the regulatory frameworks that are being created right now. I'm starting to see some real potential in Thailand. I love Thailand, I've been coming here for vacation, but never done a lot of business here in Thailand, just being completely transparent. I do live part-time in Phuket, so as you can tell, I love Thailand. But you know, most of the real crypto economies within Asia has been uh, Tokyo, which was the number one crypto economy for many years, as well as Seoul, and then Singapore and Hong Kong. Uh, even Thailand, as we know right now, is becoming innovative with the cannabis sector as well, which is a big move, not only because, as we know, cannabis is a, has many health benefits not only just recreation, but then all the tax money that the government can make off of that, you know, just like they do with alcohol. Uh, I'm also a featured writer on different media outlets and a published author. Those are some of my articles you can find on Cointelegraph or my official site, jdsalbago.com, where you'll see a lot of my videos when I speak around the world or the articles I write to educate the market. Um, so before I dive into the future of payments and what I'm talking about, I want to take a step back and go into where this all started from and, and why we have arrived at this moment in time with a new paradigm shift. Back in 1975, that's when the real PC computers, the chips, really became uh, predominantly, uh, have a lot of acceleration in the power, right? That's when it all started. Uh, chips were mainly used for business systems, hence IBM, International Business uh, uh, Machine. A few years later, we had the genius with Steve Jobs and brought that into the PC computers. So for those 20 years, we had mad, excuse me, mad, I'm, I'm from the US, I still use a lot of slang, so I might drop a few bombs like that. We had a lot, um, a lot of capabilities now in our hands, our grasp. You know, we do anything, uh, hobbies, small business owners into big businesses, right? So as we know, there was an exp exponential growth rate with the chip industry and computers, it's just accelerated, and we, now we have smartphones that are faster than, you know, I mean, we could go, we could talk about this for hours. Next, what I believe one of the greatest inventions of, in the entire world in history, the internet, as we know. I mean, that just opened up so many possibilities for uh, connecting to people, businesses around the world. Instantly, we can touch and talk to people. We can transfer information, distribute it, curate it, we can send payments, we can talk and do so many great things. Companies like Facebook, Google, eBay, Oracle, all these companies started because of this, right? Where we're at right now is we're starting to see a big problem, and that is because the internet, as we call the Web 2.0, did not address one single very, very important problem, and that is the transfer of value. And as small as a little statement that is, it's huge. And it worked for many years, as we can tell. All these businesses have grown billions of dollars. We receive a lot of value from these internet, uh, big e-commerce sites, marketplaces, um, and any other project management, cloud-based software systems. We receive a lot of value for that. 
But what we're starting to see right now, as we see through many periods of time in history, whether it's, it's war, economies, or everything, it always comes to a head. And what we're happening now is there's a bottleneck effect. And we're starting to see the, the absolute power happening with these large cloud data companies like Google that control all of our data. We're seeing it with the financial econ economy even more and more. As we've seen through the years, uh, central banks, economies have always done well and then screwed up very, very badly, as we've had, at least in the US, many, many collapses. And, and as we know, well, some of you might know, uh, the ones who are not, who are new to blockchain, uh, basically, Satoshi, who created Bitcoin, you know, from what we've all read and understood, and I believe it, this was born out of the 2008 global financial crisis, which my country caused. You know, and that's not scammers, fraudsters, ICO scammers. This is white collar, Wall Street, banking, the financial government, okay? This is not like, you know, ICO scammers, okay, who scam, which, don't get me wrong, that happened a lot, but I just like to make highlight this point when we talk about fraud in this industry and everything, we look at what <laughs> our normal government, our law and everything did, right? It wiped out the entire global economy, okay? So we saw a consolidation of power there, uh, complete fraud and greed happening, and that's where Bitcoin blockchain technology was the first officially born. There's a lot more cryptography that started in the 90s, but I won't go there. Um, and now, because we're at this stage, we're starting to see, again, we have a new paradigm shift. We have a lot of data and hierarchy control through companies like Google and Facebook, right? And then we have also the power and corruption and, and centralization of money and money transfer in our economies by banks and, and central banks uh, and financial institutions. And it's come to a point where we're starting to see the, the major negative sides about that. Um, and that's where blockchain technology will revolutionize this world. Um, I just wanted to leave this. It kind of relates to us, but not totally, but I think it's a very impactful statement because we again are in a, a, a new paradigm shift where blockchain technology and distributed ledger technology, smart contract technology is gonna completely innovate the entire world and every single system on the planet for the better. Um, as we know right now, the internet spawned companies that realized, hey, wait, we'll give you free stuff. You know what I mean? And all, all of us were like, great, we'll take it. But really, we are the product. They use us and they sell us. We don't own any of our data. And they exploit it. They get hacked. And again, we're using all this free stuff and they own all of our data. They also create a hierarchy structure, right? And then within the banks and stuff, we are customers at banks. They charge us enormous exacerbated fees, as we know. But there's also, again, a bottleneck happening in, happening in the banking system and why you see fintech and blockchain technology exploding right now. Um, I'll move on next to the payments and transactions section. Currently, as we know, and most of you probably know, what it takes to send money. Uh, remittance, right? Families here in Thailand, they want to send money to their, let's say, I know in Thailand because I've, I've been here so long, that many families, sons, daughters, husbands, go from the rural areas, areas to Bangkok or Udon or Phuket, where I live part time, to work, send money back to their family. Some use banking, some just use cash. Some still use Western Union, which is, is worse than loan sharks in the mafia back in the 50s, if you look at the prices that they charge. Um, you want to send money around the world, we have multiple, multiple third parties that need to transfer that value. And the reason why is because the internet did not provide an enhanced system that addressed the transfer of value. So we have a double spending problem on the internet. How do you transfer money and know that it's not gonna keep getting duplicated, right? So we had to create these third party companies to broker in between. And because of these brokers, they could charge whatever they want. And so what's happening right now, again, we're starting to realize like, hey, wait a second, why are we getting charged all these fees? Why does it take if I want to wire money, like why does it take three, five, eight days to send money? Like it's 2020 almost. I should be able to send money instantly at the most economically accurate price, right? Um, right now, Walmart has been is one of the key leaders for institutions working with blockchain and believing in it. And what they're claiming right now is they've saved around one billion dollars in costs since 2014 using blockchain blockchain technology. If we think of that. 
And that's not even Walmart's entire global payment economic system. That's just one part that they've been using it. And they're just one company. One billion, almost one billion dollars, you can see the level, right, of where this can go on a global level with completely innovating all the financial systems between payments, remittance, custody, and, all, and so forth. With all these thir third parties, it also leaves open a, a lot of problems with security. Not only is every single middleman taking a piece of the money, but you also have security risk, you have, you know, more prone to errors. I have this lovely quote, I forgot who said it, but it's basically, it's very simple, that robots are better than humans. And to a certain degree, I completely believe that is true. Obviously, and we can argue that, there's whole philosophical statements, and you get into AI and it's different, you know, we still need to help teach them, but robots do not make errors, right? So using blockchain technology, it's a decentralized system. So there's consensus mechanisms. When I send a payment to the girl right there, my new friend I met yesterday, I send a payment to you, right, through our wallets. It goes into a decentralized system, whether I'm sending it on Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin. A and there's proof of work, proof of stake. Many of the protocols have different consensus mechanism mechanisms. So these transactions are approved either by mining or other kind of reward systems, right? And she gets the money basically instantly. You're sending it the old way, I send it to her, well, I'm in the US, so I have to go through my bank, it has to go through SWIFT, go to her bank, and in between there, there's a few other third parties as well, right? And it could take time. Um, right now, the World Bank has done a study that says, and. I, I know I pay a lot higher in a lot of areas, that about 7% is the average of cost for every transaction through a payment. That is astronomically high, when the technology is here too as well. I know right now in Thailand, if I want to get money or cash, I have to go to an ATM, I pay about, mm, about 4 or 5% on the ATM, goes through the Thai banks, through SWIFT, goes to my bank, Wells Fargo, and then they charge me another four or five percent on top of that. And then all the middlemen in between are taking their cuts out of that. Okay? Right now, all that data is fragmented, by the way, too. It's being held, it's centralized, but it's being held on multiple locations that are still prone to security threats as well. So we're going to move on to what I like to talk about is P2P businesses being enhanced by blockchain. Again, blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology uh, can be used across almost every industry to enhance. It's almost like a philosophical statement as you look at it because what it really comes down to is the transfer of value. Is that what this is really about in smart contracts? And then the data that is stored on the blocks, distributed ledger or blockchain is distributed. So those three points of this technology is really what can enhance every system across the web and digitally, right? So we used to have uh, LimeWire, I don't know if that was big here in Thailand, or uh, BitTorrent, I don't know if you guys heard about that in Thailand. These were all like the pirating sites to download free stuff. BitTorrent was really big in the US, Europe. I thought it was big here, but um, you know they were able to s distribute their file system across multiple computers so people could then download stuff for free faster, right? So they didn't have much of an incentiv uh, incentivizing structure for people other than that, you know, if they join this cool pirating thing, they get free stuff too. Interplanetary file system is a new protocol that came out a few years ago, which is another way to use blockchain technology for your businesses. So, huh, that's interesting. I just noticed it's missing parts. <laughs> well, anyways, I definitely proof me read my presentation, so please don't be judging me. You judge them. Um, anyways, interplanetary file system allows users to store data and use their hardware, their computers for other users within this platform to store their data. They get rewarded by their the file coin, so they get rewarded by coins, and that incentivizes them to let their other companies or other users store stuff on their, their file system. The, user, the, the platform, interplanetary file um, system, then makes money off transactions. This is all peer-to-peer -peer in a de decentralized system. 
all the data from people is now distributed across blocks and immutable. So this makes instant peer-to-peer -peer file transfer without any trusted third parties that are going to have your data and either get hacked and have a data breach or sell their, your data without them knowing, like we just saw happen with Facebook and the big uh, thing with our election, right? Um, businesses within blockchain right now, without blockchain, we're having companies like Google bypass the law of scarcity, okay? In, in basic economics and business, Google's offering all this free stuff. They're bypassing this law of scarcity because they're just using us as a product, right? and they can just give us whatever, there's no economic value between us and them. With blockchain technology, we'll be directly able to connect to other companies and businesses directly without any third party uh, trusting entities, right? These are trustless systems, that's what blockchain is about. We have smart contracts that can automate contracts, processes, transactions, or custody releases and holds for either you know, money, fiat, basic legal contract, ownership rights, and everything. We can automate these processes completely instead of manual between two, three, four manual parties, right? Transfer agents, custody, multiple lawyers, all these people that are making money off these processes also prone to errors as well because we're still using manual paperwork and manual stuff like writing. I don't know how many of you spent a lot of time in Japan. I've spent a lot of time. They love the fax machine there. They still use faxes everywhere. I am not joking. It's unreal. I love Japan, so I'm not hating, but I, I find it very fascinating. They still are a very uh, cash-based society as well. And they love to write on things too. They still love paper. And that was great, you know, 50 years ago and, and before, but now the, the, the amount of, of information that's being distributed, the amount of transaction capabilities now because of technology is, is infinite. So our manual power to transfer, manage, and process contract you know, obligations, it becomes a very tedious process. So it limits us now in this new age uh, of everyone being connected through digital technology. Um, and again, back to Google, right? With, with these centralized companies, there's a, they also limit the levels of su supply and demand and manipulate the markets to a certain degree of what things the actual values are. With blockchain technology, you can actually dem democratize the supply and demand and have a true, true free market because we don't have third parties interfering all the time or centralized systems controlling everything we do. We'll, we'll immediately be able to connect at the most accurate economic value between another business or another peer, whether that's to send money, transfer some digital file that you own, or some security that you own in capital markets. And you can, will be able to and, uh, do that immediately. Right now, everything is almost immediately, but um, to digress a bit, blockchain still has a tremendous amount of scaling problems right now. So a lot of companies, protocols, Ethereum, uh, and many others are using a technique called sharding. Uh, I'm not the tech guy, I'm the business and finance guy, but sharding is supposed to be able to help scale uh, using a similar, uh, a similar structure or programming that you know went with uh, cloud storage and all that stuff. Don't ask me, I can point you to some of my guys that will tell you all about it, that's not my style. So we still have limits. Visa right now, credit card payments, it's way faster than blockchain, we know that, okay? But this is the future. You know, that we started with a wagon and then we had a crappy car that had 40, you know, horsepower, which everyone was like, wow, you know. And now you look where we're at. So there's going to be stages of innovation. We will get there. But the blockchain technology that we have right now is the proof that is what's going to revolutionize the world. So next we're going to do a little subset of e-commerce. E-commerce, one of the best business models everywhere or any, you know, around uh, marketplaces. Right now you can go online at your fingertip, find anything you want and purchase it. It's wonderful, right? But again, we see a lot of flaws with that, okay? Counterfeit goods, uh, security within our, our, our system as well for the data that the companies have on us. Um, we also know that we pay, right? We might go to eBay right now and have our PayPal hooked up. 
we pay, and to us it's instant, but did you know that to them it's not instant? There are back-end transactions that take time, and they get charged with a lot of fees. We get charged with fees. Through blockchain technology, and again, we're, I'm going to go back to the trustless systems with no intermediaries. Those direct payments will be accurate to what the fee should, should be cut you should be charged for that fee on the real accuracy, not hidden between, between multiple third parties all taking their piece, right? Um, another big uh, use case for blockchain technology is supply management. Now we know shipping, right? Around the world, there's probably what could be five, 10, 20 different locations when a product from the manufacturer is created, goes through any kind of uh, shipping, distribution, any kind of like, uh, you know, proofing it after to make sure, you know, there's a name for that, you know, when they check to make sure it's not damaged. All these counterparties, right? And especially with food products and medicine that have expiration dates, that's very important. I just read a study in China, I forgot where I read it, and it was like there was 250,000 baby deaths, I think this year or last year, because of like um, expired baby formula and stuff like that. So it, it, it's very, it's a very serious thing in blockchain technology, again, you know, I'm going to start sounding like what, one of those cult leaders, right? But I'm not. It, it's the, the power. The proof is in the pudding, as we say in the U.S., right? So with supply chain, we can enable automated, with smart contracts, we can automate processes of, of products going through the supply chain management of when they're shipped, who gets paid, the verification, the statements, the invoices to vendors can all be released through automation through smart contracts immediately. Payments can then be paid through a smart contract and release that payment with blockchain technology. So you, without that stuff, we have many counterparties all in between, prone to a lot of error, also open for fraud as well. We can automate systems fully. Again, what we're talking about right now is disintermediation, I think is the word. You know, it's always a tongue twister, to remove Google is trusted third parties, banking trusted third parties. These are trustless systems, fully automated, built by coding, right? And the robots do it better than we do. Um, advertising, let's jump into there for a little while. The advertising industry, again, is, is also prone to a lot of fraud, centralization errors, clickbait, also ad agencies doing fraud to companies that hire them, right? Uh, right now, we know that it's about one, the ad agency takes about $1 <clears throat> off of every $3 spent. That's a lot of money. That is a completely inflated economic f uh, value of that cost. It's not needed right now. And that is one of the problems we have right now, I think, with, with mass adoption for blockchain, is it's so disruptive to industries right now. I mean, it could literally wipe out trillions of dollars and, and, you know, hundreds of thousands of companies that all are these intermediary parties, completely wiped out unless they adapt somehow. So with, with advertising right now, it's on a centralized network. We're always trusting that these companies are going to report the accurate, da accurate data back to us as an advertiser. We're also, as a user, we're going to trust them that they're going to use our data when they track us when we're going around the web appropriately. It happens, it does really happen appropriately and honestly. But many times it doesn't, like we saw with Cambridge Analytics or whatever it was in the US that sold all of our data for the, for the uh, campaign elections, right? Huge, huge data breach. breach. And, and you know, and again, there's big business and I'm American and, and, and America's about capitalism. So there, you know, Facebook again, is, you know, there's gonna be a big public outcry, but they're gonna get a slap on the wrist just like HSBC did when they were laundering billions of dollars for the drug cartel, right? And all the other banks that keep doing this stuff, Wells Fargo that commits fraud, it's just a slap on the wrist. What they call too big to fail in America. It's too big to fail, meaning, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> some people might wanna say uh, the government just wants their peace, right? Could be true, could not be true, but you know, when companies commit major, major fraud, that most normal people or people like us sitting here will be locked in prison for life or do 20 years and companies and CEOs get a slap on the wrist and a fine, well, you know, everyone wants their peace, right? So right now, 
with advertising technology, we have um, data that, that's very defrag uh, fragmented across multiple streams, multiple third parties. With blockchain technology, we can have this distributed across a decentralized system that is all siloed together. And then the data is immutable as well because of the distributed ledger technology. In, instead of having my, <clears throat> excuse me, as a user, my data, and they're using my data uh, as the advertiser, then the person buying the media, then the platform that's ho hosting it, you know, like a Chrome or YouTube or Safari, everyone has pieces of the data. Some share with each other, some don't. Some sell and make a lot of money behind their back off of our data, some don't. But what we have again, when I went back to the banking system and the blockchain for businesses, there, because of these third parties that have to get involved, there's not a fair economic value here, right? There's consolidation again in a hierarchy of what they believe that we should be charged. And we just pay it because we don't have many other options. But right now we do and we'll have more with blockchain technology. The point right now with advertising is again, peer to peer, peer to peer distribution of data and accurate data and accurate value for transactions. And also the data will be immutable, distributed across ledgers, so it can never be changed. So when I am an ad, uh, when I'm a company and I go to an ad buyer, I, I will be guaranteed that I will see accurate data and not be lied to. I will know exactly who was tracking, you know, uh, the, which users or customers were clicking on my advertisements or viewing it for how much, and I can guarantee that I trust what these people are doing. You know, it, it'll be, there'll be consensus mechanisms again. Um, with the ad buying process, just like every other business, we can utilize smart contracts to automate all the business processes, including payments, releasing of custody, any other transfer of value through smart contracts. That will be completely automated. You know, it'll save money on hiring less employees, less prone to error, again, many other things. Um, and that should conclude my presentation today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's my contact. Uh, my company's site is leadinventures.biz, and then my official site and blog is jdsalbago.com. And there's all my other things for all the people who like WeChat and the little QR codes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much.